Okay, so we're looking at the 2011 two-unit HSC exam paper. Question 1, part A, is asking us to evaluate the cube root of 651 on 4 pi to 4 significant figures. So this is really a matter of using a calculator. Um, we will have to do the inside of the cube root first on our calculator, so I'll do this on the side here, 651 on 4 pi, plug that into the calculator and you should get this answer, 51.8049 and the number keeps going. Obviously this isn't the answer, we need to cube root this answer. So cube root of 51 0.8049 etc. If you put that into the calculator you should get 3.72783 and the number keeps going. Now the question is asking us to round this figure to four significant figures. To find four significant to find significant figures the rule is coming from the left the first non-zero number, in this case 3, is our first significant figure. And all non-zero numbers after the first are also significant. So in this case, all of these, because they're not zero, are all significant. We're looking for four significant figures. So this would be our, 3 would be our first, 7 our second, 2 our third, and this number here would be our fourth. So rounding off the 7, we need to round upwards since 8 is more than 5. So 7 becomes 8. And our answer, to round it off to 4 significant figures, becomes 3.728. Okay, so question 1b is asking us to simplify n squared minus 25 over n minus 5. Here we will have to factorize the numerator, this part here, and we'll have to factorize the denominator if it's possible. If you look at the numerator, n squared minus 25, this expression here has no common factors that we can take out and put outside the brackets. Um, n squared is a square number, obviously n, when you square it, gives you n squared. 25, if you square 5, you get so it's a difference of squares. Difference of squares can be factorized as the product of conjugates. So n times n is n squared and 5 times 5 is 25 and one's a plus, the other's a minus, hence conjugates. Over n minus 5, there isn't much we can do with n minus 5, we can't factorize it so we leave it as it is. And cancel where possible. So this cancels with that. And our answer is n plus 5 multiplied by 1 is n plus 5 over 1 or just n plus 5. Okay, so question 1 part c is asking us to solve 2 to the power of 2x plus 1 equals to 32. It's asking us to solve for x. So we need to make the index the subject, so the index is 2x plus 1, that will equal to log of base 2, uh, 32. Okay, so as you already know, we can't do log of base 2 on the calculator because the calculator has log of base 10. So we need to use the change of base formula, which says simply put 32 our answer over log 10 of 2 our base and if you plug that into the calculator this will equal to 5 and so 2x would be 5 minus 1 which is 4 and x is 4 of 2 which is 2 alternatively you can look at 32 and see that it's so log 2 of 32 would be log 2 of 2 to the power of 5. And using log laws, we know that 
the index can be brought down. So this would be um, 5 log 2 of 2. Log 2 of 2, this becomes 1. Again, we're using the log law, so it's 5 times 1, which equals to 5. In other words, 2x plus 1 equals to 5, and therefore x equals to 2. So there's two approaches there that you can use. Okay, so question 1D is asking us to differentiate lin of 5x plus 2 with respect to x. Now, whenever when we're differentiating lin of a function, so lin of f of x, the answer would be the derivative of that function over the function. So in this case, the function is f of a 5x plus 2. The derivative of the function is 5. So if y equals lin 5x plus 2, dy dx, the differential of lin 5x plus 2, would be the diff derivative of 5x plus 2, which is 5, over the function itself, which is 5x plus 2. Okay, moving on to question 1e, we're asked to solve 2 minus 3x less than or equal to h. So this is an inequality question. Uh, we solve it just like uh, normal algebra. So we pretend that this is an equal sign for now. So minus 3x is less than or equal to 8 minus 2. So I'm bringing the 2 over to the other side. And when you bring it to the other side, it changes sign to a negative. So that equals to 6. Now this is where it diff uh, things are different. Um, whenever we divide or multiply by a negative number, so in this case I'm going to divide 6 by negative 3, we need to change the inequality sign to its opposite, um, and so the answer is 6 divided by minus 3 is minus 2, so the answer is x greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so moving on to question 1f, we're asked to rationalize the denominator of 4 on square root of 5 minus square root of 3. To rationalize the denominator, we have to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of this denominator would be square root of 5 plus square root of 3. And what you do on the bottom, we must do to the top. So the top would be square root of 5 plus square root of 3. OK, so 4 multiplied by this expression would be, I'm not going to expand it. I'm going to just leave it in factored form because it just becomes useful later on if we have to cancel out or if we can cancel out. Um, this expression, product of conjugates, is the difference of squares. So it would be square root of 5 squared minus square root of 3 squared, which is 5 minus 3, which is 2. And I'll just show you how that's the case here. Um, if you actually do this uh, manually, so square root of 5 times square root of 5 times square root of 5 is a 5. Square root of 5 times square root of 3 is a square root of 15. And square root of 3 multiplied by, or negative square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 5 is a negative square root of 15. So these cancel out. And that leaves us with the final one, negative square root of 3 times positive square root of 3, which equals to negative 3. So it's 5 minus 3, which is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. So that's exactly what we expected. So this is a 2 here. And we can cancel the 2 with the 4. The 4 becomes 2, and the answer is 2 outside of 
square root of 5 plus the square root of 3. Well, that's our final answer. Okay, so question 1G is a batch of 800 items is examined. The probability that an item from which batch, from this batch is defective is 0 0.02. How many items from this batch are defective? Okay, so we've got 800 items, 0 0.02 of which are expected to be defective. So if you put just plug that into the calculator you will get 16. Alternatively you could have converted this into a fraction which is 2 over 1 with two zeros because there's two zeros out after the decimal point so it's 2 over 100 and that has to be multiplied by the 800 items. Um, cancel 100 with 800 so 800 becomes 8 and 100 becomes 1. 8 times 2 is 16 so answer is 16 items are defective. And that's our final answer. answer.